Exploring Sloss Furnaces, Abandoned Pig Iron Furnaces, 2024. Join us on a thrilling adventure as we explore the eerie remnants of Sloss Furnaces, an abandoned iron plant frozen in time. Travel across America with me. The first stop is the recently constructed, gorgeous, I might add, Visitor Center. Please sign in at the Visitor Center prior to entering the site. It's free. Just sign in because as we walk around this place, you'll see why you got to sign in and sign that you won't do anything dumb or get hurt. It's kind of crazy how they let you walk around this place. And there will be some critical definitions you won't want to miss provided near the end of this video. The self-guided tour allows people the opportunity to explore the site on their own while reading about how the furnaces worked and the story of the men who worked there. The self-guided tour brochure explains the process while the informative signs throughout the site expand on the story by including science, history, and social themes associated with Sloss Furnaces. It's free to the public and they're open Tuesday through Saturday 10 to 4. This is a National Historic Landmark. Not only will you learn about the history as you walk around and of course the mystery surrounding this industrial site because a lot of these corners and nooks and crannies and hallways and things that you'll see as we go through in this video are kind of um, mysterious and there's a lot of mystery surrounding this industrial site and we will witness the picturesque beauty of these decaying structures from the towering smokestacks to the rusted machinery get ready to uncover the secrets of this fascinating location in our exploration of sloss furnaces we're going to take you up close closer than you would expect to the pig iron producing blast furnace that operated on this massive site from 1882 to 1971. And if you are a metal artist, this is a great place to fine tune your technique and wait till you see some of the artwork that's on the property. We'll show you that later in the video. Please stay on the sidewalk. You won't believe where we went at the Sloss Furnace. No, we didn't go in the restricted area, I promise. Have you subscribed? Do not forget to subscribe. If you have, thank you. If you haven't, could you subscribe please? Next is number three, the Sloss Boilers which generated the steam that powered the facility. Sloss has 16 boilers, 12 on the left side and four on the right. The ones on the left were built around 1910, while the ones on the right were built in the 1920s. Simply amazing, incredible, and I just love this orange color. It's burnt orange, right? Number four, the stock tunnel. Three pieces work together to get the iron ore, limestone, and coke into the furnace. Trains carrying materials from the mines and quarries would pull into the stock trestle and unload the ingredients into large storage bins below. The stock tunnel is approximately 250 yards long and served both furnaces. And this is one of those things that I couldn't believe we were doing. You walk down the two flights of stairs into the stock tunnel. You'll see the scale car on the right as you enter. You'll see the skip hoist and down the tunnel to see the skip buckets and chutes. Don't forget to subscribe. Oh man, the stock tunnel was closed for construction. Just that part, we could keep on going. Watch your step and mind your head. Next, we saw this ladle car. In iron foundries, ladles were used to transport and pour out molten metals. Wouldn't you have loved to have seen that, but not feel it? I bet it was hot working around there. Ladles ranged in size from small hand-carried vessels, yikes, to large blast furnace ladles that held up to 330 tons. Wait until you see the artwork. Remember I mentioned that there's artwork on this property? Critical definitions you won't want to miss are provided near the end of this video. You won't believe where we went in the Sloss Furnace? I can't believe that they let you in all of the spots at the Sloss Furnace. It's amazing. It's incredible. We popped through this ginormous building to the other side and found all these other items outside. Do not forget to subscribe. What a day at Sloss Furnace. What an experience. If you're in Birmingham, you've got to go there. It's crazy informative. What a great experience in American history. Please stay on the sidewalk though. And this sign says the spray pond. Okay, we might have gone a little out of order, but it's all right, we'll catch everything. Sloss continuously used. 5 million gallons of water per furnace every day to cool the furnaces, create steam, 
power machinery and cool the molten iron and slag. About those definitions. Following a cycle, the hot water was then piped to the spray pond. Here the water was cooled and then recycled through the plant. That's great. Oh, that big building, it's called the cast shed. Well, the artwork's going on in that other cast shed, but this is the other cast shed. Okay, this is the number one cast shed. At one end is the amphitheater, constructed when the site was open to the public in 1983. And at the other end of the cast shed is the number one furnace. The original Sloss furnaces were created in 1882 and replaced in 1927 and 1929 by the furnaces that you see today. Iron ore, limestone, coke, and hot air were continuously fed into the furnace, which would reach temperatures of, get this, 3,800 degrees Fahrenheit. As the materials moved down and hot air moved up the furnace, two products accumulated in the bottom, or hearth, molten iron and slag. About those definitions? The iron and slag were withdrawn or tapped through two holes called notches. About every four hours, the iron notch located at the base of the furnace was opened, allowing the molten iron to flow out of the furnace. Can you imagine seeing that? Until 1931, Sloss Furnaces used the floor casting method of making pig iron bars. About those definitions, we'll learn about a pig iron bar is. Men would dig the molds for the pig iron bars into the floor. And what about slag? Well, you'll just have to wait to the definitions. And, and we've, we've talked about slag, right? Haven't we? Right next to the furnace in the number one cash shed is an elevated walkway. Under the elevated walkway is the ladle car that we saw earlier. It's the large steel kettle lined with heat resistant fire brick. It transferred molten iron from the furnaces to the pig casters. As you look down the ladle car, you can see the remains of the slog pig caster. The ladle car and the pig caster were brought to Sloss in 1931, making the floor casting method that we just discussed obsolete. Then we found the pyrometer house. The two-story brick building that sits right below the number one furnace was named after the temperature measuring instruments called pyrometers that were mounted in the upstairs room. The downstairs room was a mill weight shop where furnace repairmen worked. This building is the strongest built building on site, I bet so, and would be used to protect the workers if anything went seriously wrong with the furnace. Well, that's good to hear. The use of the pyrometer house prompted the workers to call it the doghouse, saying the furnace would get mad at them and put them in the doghouse. Cute. And then number six, the hot blast stoves. Along one side of the water tower plaza, which the water tower is the one that's got sloss written on it. You see the big tower? It's such a beautiful, picturesque scene, isn't it? Back to the hot blast stoves. Along one side of the water tower plaza are six tall cylindrical hot blast stoves. Five are in a row with the sixth around the corner creating an L shape. These stoves heated the air before it was pumped into the furnace. The stoves consisted of steel shells lined with heat resistant bricks and filled with a tall lattice of fire brick called checkers. Waste gas from the furnace would be burned in the stove to heat the checkers. The gas was then shut off and the air was blown through the stoves. The hot checkers heated the air to 1400 degrees Fahrenheit and large pipes carried the hot air to the furnace. Quite an operation, wouldn't you say? Did I mention that this is a National Historic Landmark? Yes, the Sloths Furnaces are a National Historic Landmark. Thank you for sharing my travel videos. And this is the entrance to the Blowing Engine Building. No climbing. Okay, promise. In the first two rooms of the Blowing Engine Building are two Ingersoll Rand turbo blowers. These were brought to Sloss Furnaces in 1949 and 1951. They are centrifugal compressors driven by steam turbines. These compact, efficient turbo blowers did the work of all eight of the original blowing engines located directly behind the back turbo blower. The turbo blowers created very hot temperatures in the building, sometimes as hot as 100 degrees Fahrenheit in summer months. Yikes! Sounds like Death Valley to me. Built in the early 1900s, this is the oldest building on site. Isn't this interesting? The Sloths Furnaces in Birmingham, Alabama. 
Are you hooked yet? Are you hooked on the Sloss Furnaces, a historic landmark in Birmingham, Alabama? We are in the heart of Sloss Furnaces. Now, the powerhouse. Built in 1922, the powerhouse generated electricity for the plant as well as the Sloss Quarters, the housing community built by the company for its workers. Oh, so it was a company town type thing. Steam from the boiler spun a turbine that powered a generator to produce an alternating current. The turbine and generator are on the upper level of the building, while the machines on the ground floor converted the alternating current into direct current. This was the craziest part of the tour, in my opinion. Give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying this video. It's a part of American history. It's part of industry. It's so amazing. Danger, second floor under repair. Do not enter. You don't have to tell me twice. Remember I told you we didn't go in order? Well, this is number three in the brochure, and it's the Sloss Boilers. Colonel James Withers Sloss was one of the founders of Birmingham in helping to promote railroad development in Jones Valley, Alabama, and participating in the Pratt Coke and Coal Company, one of the new city's first manufacturers. In 1881, he formed his own company, the Sloss Furnace Company, and began construction of Birmingham's first blast furnace on 50 acres of land donated by the Elyton Land Company for industrial development. And we've heard of this Elyton Land Company and mentioned it in my other videos on downtown Birmingham. You'll want to watch all of those videos. The first blast was initiated in April 1882. The facility produced 24,000 tons of high quality iron during its first year of operation. Sloss Iron won a bronze medal at the Southern Exposition held in 1883 at Louisville, Kentucky. Go Sloss! It's just amazing that they allow visitors to walk through the remains of this site. What do you think so far? Leave a comment below. The pathway to the stock tunnel and skip hoist? The stock tunnel are the three pieces that work together to get the iron ore, limestone, and coke into the furnace. I think I mentioned that already, but remember we took a different path than the arrows led. Just simply amazing. Please do not climb on the sculptures. Oh, we're at the artwork? Cool. Turtle Island Drum. Hmm. Look at these three guys. Remember, I had promised I'd show you these iron sculptures. And then this student cupola chain? Um, interesting, wouldn't you say? I like it though. Such a picturesque place. The rustic silos furnaces, boilers, water tower, everything against the beautiful blue sky with its puffy clouds. Now, the definitions. Remember, I have been promising to give you definitions. Here it goes. What is pig iron? Oink, oink. No, 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 no. Pig iron is the name original iron workers gave the bars or ignits of iron they made at furnace sites. Pig iron gets its name from the way the bars looked when they were made in the floor of a cast shed. Remember how they used to make them in the floor? Like piglets feeding from the sow or mother pig. By 1931, Sloss Furnaces was making around 800 tons of iron each day. That means the site would make around 32,000 pig iron bars a day. Wow, simply incredible. The industry in the early 20th century. So what is slag? Slag is a waste material called a byproduct left after smelting iron. What we did at Sloss. The slag pile at Sloss used to be between 20 and 40 feet high. Even though slag is waste, doesn't mean it's wasted. Slag can be used to make concrete, fertilizer, and other useful items. Great idea. And then what is coal? Coal is a burnable material used as fuel by people since the 1800s. And then what is iron ore? Iron ore is a rock that contains iron and is found naturally in the ground all over the world. The melting point of iron is about 2800 degrees, making liquid iron hotter than typical lava. Iron makes up about 5% of the Earth's crust, making it the fifth most common element found. And then what is flux? Flux is a material used in iron making to remove impurities from the iron ore. It's the cleaner of the process. Sloss furnaces primarily use limestone and dolomite as the flux in their furnaces. Limestone is mainly made up of calcium carbonate. 
which is what Tums are made of. Well, I guess that's just a little bit of free information there about Tums. And then what is Coke? Coke is basically a pure form of coal used in blast furnaces, like Sloss Furnace did. It's used as fuel. Coke is made in Coke ovens like these by heating ground up coal to 1800 to 2000 degrees for up to two days. Wow. The first known time Coke was used to make iron was in 1709 in Britain. That's 177 years before Coca-Cola, making it the original Coke. Ha, huh, funny. One final stop before leaving Sloss Furnaces. This industrial marvel in Birmingham, Alabama. This is across from the visitor center and near the parking lot. Historic Black Bath. Despite being dominated by black labor, the industrial workplace was rigidly segregated until the 1960s. Men punched separate time clocks and bathed in separate bathhouses following the implementation of desegregation laws in the 1960s. The black bathhouse became a storage facility for both black and white workers. And we opened the door and it was just filled with all kinds of just junk and stuff. It's right next to the coal bin. Did you enjoy the tour of Sloss Furnaces? Flip-flops on the ground. Unclassic road trip. Don't forget to check out the other videos about our five-mile walking tour in downtown Birmingham, like the culture and arts through the decades, the heaviest corner on earth, and so much more at the Unclassic Road Trip. Thank you.